As I sat in self-quarantine pondering this week's video, this topic seemed appropriate. After all, I was a young man when I first walked across the barren landscape. Leaving the neon megacity behind me, I trekked out into the desert wastes. Bandits all around me. I made it through my ordeal. Starving and parched, I found an oasis. Look, all I'm saying is Vegas is a rough place. Now let's talk about our broken dystopia. I'm author DC Ferguson, and this is the World Building Dojo. Before we get started, I wanted to give you all a quick reminder. Subscribers to my newsletter are getting a copy of Cora Blake, Arcane Agent, for free. This short story is a prequel to the Dragon's Dream Saga and a great chance to get started with the series. I linked the newsletter sign up in the comments. Make sure to sign up and get your free copy. And while you're at it, you beautiful monster, why don't you like me on Facebook? We'll make a blanket for it. We'll be best friends. Plus, you get to see what I'm up to and get my books from the store and all sorts of cool stuff. So, like me. The burning question, if you're watching this, is why my dystopia is broken to begin with. The truth of the matter is that while most dystopian tales we could watch are very entertaining, for the vast majority you have to kind of turn your brain off to accept it. Dystopian stories have a terrible side effect in that they don't hold up to lore very well. The more you try to explain the history of a dystopian society, the more likely it falls apart under any kind of scrutiny. But DC, that's so bleak, you make it sound like I can't write in this genre at all. Well, guy who talks to your monitor, much like our dystopian genre, the future does kind of look bleak. This isn't your fault, but you might be able to fix it. There have always been stories in the genre, but as the genre has grown a lot in recent years, a lot of mega popular franchises have spawned clones, and these clones take their inspiration or outright copy the success of blockbusters, which effectively makes them a copy of a copy. Believe me, of all the different genres we talk about in the world building dojo, this one has the least amount of fertile ground for innovation. Keep in mind, dystopian stories were already a niche genre to begin with, and some really big standouts and classics already are under its belt. It was unlikely that anyone was going to come along and reinvent the wheel, but some writers have, in fact, and created some great work over the past two decades. With the field now glutted, though, we're seeing boring worlds we've seen before, trying to come up with some bizarre conceit that makes their world different from the one they're copying. The worst part is that the gimmick has to be then reverse engineered into the world building to explain why it's there. So let's start there. Having a premise for your world isn't a bad thing. I highly recommend it, actually. If you have what you feel is an original idea, water that seed and watch your baby grow. My only advice here is to know when you're trying to jam a square peg in a round hole. What I mean by that is that if your original idea keeps tripping you up in terms of your world's lore or the story you're trying to tell, maybe the conceit isn't as good as you thought it was. Like we say often, cut and cut mercilessly. If there's one takeaway I want you to remember from this video, it's this. That original cool idea you have, that's the elevator pitch. That's the hook. That's what puts butts in seats. All of that is true. But if you turn out a bad story, you throw a good idea in with bad writing, the proverbial baby with the bathwater goes right out the window. Never be so in love with an original concept that you keep it to the detriment of the story you're trying to tell. Now, I might have made this genre sound tired, retread, devoid of new ideas, perhaps even cliche. All of that might be true, and I'd still tell you the genre includes some of my favorite stories in fantasy and sci-fi. So if we want to set ourselves on the right course in the choppy waters of this genre, it might not hurt to look at what dystopias do at their best. I don't think there's a single example that I can cite of great dystopian fantasy that doesn't involve social commentary. In fact, I think this genre does social commentary better than almost any other. Whether we're talking about 1984's warnings about totalitarianism, or Night of the Living Dead making us ask if we're more afraid of the zombie monsters outside or the human monsters inside the house, we're always making a statement. Even in comedy. There's no denying that Idiocracy is a dystopian tale, it's just really funny, and is most definitely making a statement. 
If you've watched the channel before, then you're no stranger to my critiques of The Hunger Games for a number of reasons. But again, we're going to go back to the well here. So I'm not singling this one out by itself though. Let's also add in the Maze Runner and Divergent series. All of these came out around the same time as the genre was on fire a few years back. Unfortunately, all of these films, and the books they came from, suffer from the same issue. Instead of making any kind of social commentary, they have this weird conceit that doesn't hold water very well, and ends up feeling a lot like the author said, wouldn't it be neat if this happened? The thing is, in order to get to the plot of the story, we first have to accept this massive amount of history-altering events that led to it. Make no mistake, it's not an accident that all of these stories kind of skip over that part. Like I said, these stories can't hold lore very well without introducing huge plot holes that could you could drive a truck through. So, where our social commentary works well, and dystopian work in general, is when it takes a single element, usually the message, and pushes it to a semi-logical ex extent. Night of the Living Dead is, what would happen if we woke up one day to find that the dead were rising from their graves with murderous intent? Um, idiocracy is, what would happen if stupid people outbred the intelligent ones over the course of 500 years? Uh, the Minority Report is, what would happen to society if we could predict crime before it happened? Notice, these are not really the plots of the movies. These are the conceits, the elevator pitch, the hook, and every one of them is following the same old rule I'll never stop drilling into your heads. Kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. I remind everyone about this, but I'm also constantly reminding myself. Sometimes a cool idea will spawn in your head and one thought leads to another, and before you know it, the only way to explain what you've created is describing each individual strand of a spider's web. You see this often when authors try to explain their plots. Well, it takes place 300 years from now. It's still Earth, though, and there's this technology that's enslaved people. Wait, let me back up. See, 150 years before that, there were these aliens that were like space wizards. And anyway, so now the space wizards gave us this tech, but it's really a trick to keep us controlled. See, that's a lot of explaining, but it's absolutely no plot. When it gets that convoluted, I again advise cut and cut mercilessly. What you're looking for is to get to the meat of what you want to say. Take this one aspect you want to critique or shine a light on and push it into the dystopian period. Whether because of an ice age, a meteor, a nuclear war, a plague, or just good old zombies, something happened in the world and now this thing that you want to talk about is going to be really important. The story tells me how. What's funny about this is that almost it's almost formulaic in a way, and it's downright easy, but yet the genre is still loaded with these authors that want to copy popular but poorly executed genre work that doesn't have anything to say. Basically, you take your message, and that'll be the theme for your work, and it informs the world building. Then you take your catalyst, what event make, made your world dystopian. That also helps build your world. Lastly, we grab our ending. Yes, I'm totally serious. Where do we want this story going? Are we looking for the cure, or are we just looking to survive this new world? This informs the tone and the world building. So now we have theme, message, the type of world, and the tone. Slap a three-act structure on that bad boy and tell me the story you want to tell. If you're feeling frisky, you can even watch last week's video, not have any hero at all, or you can watch the video before that and not even use a three-act structure. See, that's KISS in effect right there. Streamlined, smooth, and most importantly, simple. Now, we're running long in this section, but I have a lot, so much I need to say about this part that we need to pump the brakes here. I feel like this part is so important, so let's see it in action. While dystopian is our primary genre, it's really just the setting more often than not. Basically, what usually happens is it pairs up with the classic genres to tell a unique story, such as A Quiet Place, which is dystopian horror. So, let's talk about some examples in each category and see how their messaging and simplicity allows them to hold up years after they were written. So first up, we're going to talk about action, and that's going to bring us to our first deep cut, the 1987 Arnold Schwarzenegger film, The Running Man. 
Now, after the economic collapse of 2017, I know, the totalitarian government has a bread and circuses approach to crime. The game show, The Running Man, is the solution for the biggest offenders, a gladiator-styled show where convicted men try to evade or go through the show's celebrity executioners. Arnold Schwarzenegger is framed and put into The Running Man, showing the audience doctored video to convince them of his crimes. To be honest, I'm amazed this hasn't been in the reboot pile in Hollywood, because even though it's an action film based on a Stephen King novel, it is incredibly timely. With discussions going on in the USA right now this second about the private sector taking over the prison system, the bias of media outlets, and the potential for doctored footage to alter perceptions of events, not only does this show the cold detachment from prisoners as people, but it does so with a ratings-hungry host as a monster at the helm. The messaging of this movie is clear, and it takes this one aspect of the message and it draws it out to the extent that we see it in the film. While a little corny by today's standards, the story itself, the bones stand up very well. Like I said, this one's primed for a reboot, mark my words. If you like films or books in this genre, I highly recommend Total Recall, Robocop, and the remake of Judge Dredd. Now, let's scoot over to drama, and for that, we're going to need an old favorite of mine, the 1995 film Harrison Bergeron. Again, we're in a totalitarian society. The conceit is that the government has pushed for intellectual egalitarianism, with every person wearing a headset that keeps everyone at about the same intelligence. With our main character, the headset doesn't work on Harrison. And because of his incredible intelligence, he's brought into a secret society where he's allowed to work on any project he wants, to work without any headset at all, to his truest potential. As much of a dream as that sounds like, Harrison can't shake the feeling that the gift he's been given should belong to everyone. The film was done well, based loosely on a Kurt Vonnegut novel of the same name. We're once again looking at where our messaging is pretty timely 25 years after it was adapted to film and 59 years after it was written right this second there are conversations going on about about the value of meritocracy versus egalitarianism the current state of the u.s education system and also well you know that mass hysteria that involves hoarding toilet paper Again, the work has a simple message pushed to the extreme, and a plot that isn't quite a hero's journey, but something else entirely. I can't spoil anything, just find the film and watch it. Everyone loves Sean Astin anyway. And if you like dystopias like these, you'd also want to try out Children of Men, 1984, and A Clockwork Orange. Finally, we're going to talk about sci-fi, a genre very close to my heart. So for that, we're going to jump over to something a little bit more modern, and that's the current Netflix series Altered Carbon, also based on a book series. In the far-flung future, a technology has been created that allows every single person to have their consciousness encoded to a device embedded in their neck called a stack. As such, people no longer need to die, nor to stay in the body they were born in. The stack can be moved to any body, and the consciousness is loaded into it. Our story follows Takeshi Kovach, a prisoner that's been on ice for 300 years and has just had his stack activated by some very shady people requesting that he solve a murder. Once again, we have a technology that pushes things very far, with a simple story driving it. But we also have wider ramifications in this story, such as the question of what makes a person, should anyone ever be immortal? And this society is so rife with class conflict. It's an amazing series, and if you like it, you'd also love Demolition Man, Robocop, and Blade Runner. So, we spend an entire section here talking about how dystopian genre tales are at their best when they're making social or even political commentary without a heavy-handed message, often just a simple story and letting your characters explore the space you've created with your world building. This is dystopian in its purest form and its absolute best. And I didn't even touch on other genres, like the aforementioned Night of the Living Dead, or a huge favorite of mine, comedies like Warm Bodies, or even video games like Horizon Zero Dawn. We've looked at great examples, we've talked about the dangers and pitfalls, but there's still something missing. Let's just get it out of the way. 
Tropes are fine. I've told you guys that a dozen times. We're all using them to some degree or another. But I would say that this genre is so top-heavy with tropes that a vast majority of them have become cliché. Uh, after the Great War, people divided on class so sharply it is now only the haves and have-nots. But as we'll see with our protagonist when she wins the town's lottery, she'll be brought from the streets to the high-rises, and she'll bring down the system from within. Does that make you want to barf? Because I could barely get through it, and I wrote the dang thing. How about this one? In a far-flung future, Earth is a utopia, but after a chance encounter, our protagonist finds out utopia has a price. A shadowy government hides in plain sight, a puppet master pulling all the strings. Our plucky and attractive young hero will find out the truth or die trying. That one hurt. Ugh. And not in the good kind of way. Whoa, 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 whoa. Easy. This is a family show or something. Behave. Anyway, what I'm getting at is that this is what happens when you let yourself become a copy of a copy. The stories are so tired and done over that you end up stapling this weird conceit onto it just to make it seem original when it just plain isn't. Look at Walking Dead. No, really. I mean really look at it. Especially early on when it was literally the biggest show on television. Zombies? Yeah, been there, done that since 1968. Humans are the real monster? Again, 1968. A group of people struggling to survive an apocalypse where even your best friend can turn. Come on. Even Shaun of the Dead had that. So, how the heck did this get show get so popular? Well, there's two things Walking Dead brought to the table no series had ever given audiences before. Back in the day, if a character died on a show, it was an event. The actor or actress got another job and left, or they died in real life and had to be written out. With Walking Dead, no one was ever safe. There was always a threat that anyone at any time could get killed. Nowadays, after Game of Thrones and Walking Dead perfected this, some of the shock values lost, but this was brand new ground at the time. The consequences were tangible and they're permanent, and the show's brutal reality reflected that. The second thing worth mentioning is that it is basically a horror soap opera. No, I'm not kidding. Again, really look at it. The walkers of the backdrop, they could have been aliens or man-eating snakes for all intents and purposes. What was keeping audiences coming back was the relationships that were forged, the characters we liked and how they bounced off of each other, the plans they made and the ones that couldn't be trusted. Make no mistake about it, you get these water cooler talks about the show every week while your grandma's back home sitting there watching her stories and thinking we're rookies for just getting into this sort of thing now. What I'm trying to say is, there is a lot of ground still to break if you're a pioneer. Get in the lab and start using your favorite dystopias as an inspiration, not a crutch. The dystopian genre is at its best when it has something to say, and the stories are among some of the best and most thought-provoking and often quoted. You'd do well to study the masters and have a message, but instead of copying what they did, figure out what you want to say and create your world based on that. Once again, the donations from you guys are so awesome, and I thank you so much. We're still working with the Boston-based needs organization to get this beautiful lady a service dog. Her name is Liana. She's 11 and on the spectrum. This wonderful little person is my girl, and if you'd like to help out, there's a link in the comments below. While you're down there, don't forget to sign up for my newsletter. The link is also there, and you're going to get Cora Blake arcane agent for free. You'll get cool news about what I'm working on in books and here on the channel, and it comes loaded with cool authors and promotions for fantasy and sci-fi. Don't forget to like and subscribe to hear about new videos, and as always, I'm DC Ferguson. Now have fun and get crafting.